Sweat Equity Podcast and streaming show. Pragmatic entrepreneurial advice and dick jokes hosted by me, Law Smith, and Eric Reginger. Wow. Is that... What? Is that Sorry. too loud? I'm working on it. <laughs> Hashtag girthy RI. Do you want to get amped or not, bro? Hashtag Why? 69B2B. Hashtag sweat equity. Uh, we're on iTunes or your Apple Podcast app, Spotify, Laughable. You can watch us on YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo, your mom's Walkman, LinkedIn, Medium, Friendster. Mm. Are you reading that off a note you wrote down, Friendster? No, no. I'm, I ad lib, man. Come on, I'm a stand up. I can, I can riff with them, baby. Uh, we're sponsored by Grasshopper. Try Grasshopper.com forward slash sweat. You get 50 bucks off a business phone line. Don't be a jabroni and have a Google voice number when someone calls your business, your side hustle, whatever you're trying to do. Why? The reason you're listening to this is you want to be better, right? Well, try grasshopper.com forward slash sweat. Hooks you up, hooks the show up. Uh, $50 off a business phone line. I just signed up with our code for a new brand I'm with. Boom. Ooh. K- little kickback to us. I didn't get that number. It's coming in. Didn't send it to me. We'll talk to our sponsor rep. Uh, FreshBooks, go FreshBooks.com. I'm on FreshBooks for uh, my agency, Tokubaga. Uh, go FreshBooks.com forward slash sweat. That'll give you a hookup as well. I forget the discount, but there's a good, so I think it's 100 bucks or something like that. 50, 50, 50. bucks. Uh, go FreshBooks.com forward slash sweat for that QuickBooks alternative, for that, uh, for that zero stay focused, alternative. Stay focused. I'm on it. I'm watching. And then... Uh, if you need digital uh, digital marketing help from... Uh, you don't know. Just stop looking at your computer. Yeah. <laughs> your, your small, God. small startup, uh, nano, micro, local sector, Tokubaga, T-O-C-O-B-A dot G-A. Uh, you can listen to the incremental, uh, Eric's podcast that he doesn't do, Is or my podcast right that I don't do, Work Harder, Not Smarter. At least I did make some. That sounds like our guest is oh, here. Oh, is somebody here? Our guest is here. Are you ready to go? Let's pin him to the chat. We're doing this remote. All right. Alex, are you there? Okay, we got him. Can you hear us? Hey, can you hear me? All right. Are you done with your ad read, sir? We're ready to get the show started. What about my sweat equity? Let's get to work! Sweat equity. (laughs) Sweat equity. My sweat equity. My, My sweat equity. We can hear you, buddy. We can hear you. Uh, he can't hear the music that was playing, huh? Ah, I see. <laughs> oh, man. Sorry, uh, you missed the music. Out. So we're doing, uh, our guest is Alex, I'm going to say Abel, because I like to say it in a weird way. I can't say people's names for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Alex Abel, A-B-E-L-L. Lunchpool.io is the uh, website. Lunchpool to kind of end workplace depression or kind of loneliness uh, work in workplace loneliness is kind of the motto, right? Yeah, I mean the the motto is um, it's better when we eat together. So it's you know depression, feelings of isolation, all the things that uh, that are so prevalent in the digital age where people have forgotten how to talk to each other. Really. Yeah, and uh, you and I were talking. You know, ironically, you may have been dealing with the issue for the reason you created the the i you know the brand of swords is uh you just moved to a new area and you're doing you're in that area where you're like i'm the new guy in town i don't know if i know a bunch of people you know but you didn't move for lunch pool right alex oh my bad you no, moved, that's correct yeah because uh, so it wasn't the great irony of oh man this app's <laughs> taking off and i feel so lonely <laughs> no that would have been a, a great irony for sure it was actually my wife got a job up in Tennessee where I'm, I'm at right now. I'm at the Anderson Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Oh, we know. Um, we could tell. Oh, yeah. With you the know, background. The background. That yeah, looks very like innovative chemistry. Beautiful stuff mind scribing. So. Hey. <laughs> um, but, but no, we, we had just actually started to get some traction in Tampa. And then, boom, my wife lands this job. And so uh, I do find myself in this new town, uh, you know, having to – to network, being the new guy and saying, okay, who do I, who do I go to lunch with today? I'll eat with my dog and my, uh, my iPhone. Well, luckily you're a very, uh, approachable and likable guy, Alex. I don't think you're really going to have that much trouble, are you? 
Well, thanks. Yeah, I actually have a lunch date today. So ah. I'm, I'm getting lucky. See, I haven't had one in like seven years. <laughs> so. Oh goodness. Yeah. Oh goodness. We gotta we gotta work on that, Eric. <laughs> this counts. I don't. No, this. Yeah, this is it. This is lunch. We just don't eat. Yeah. yeah. You don't eat anyway. Be crow. You're... You'd be the worst person to go to lunch with. I, I know. I'm keto. I would just stare at you and judge you. Right. I don't do any of that. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> That's how you talk. I don't talk like that. <laughs> I'm keto. and uh, So with keto, can you eat at restaurants? Like, is, are there, is there Only special ones with the signs that say, you know, that they used to be segregated. Fruit flies like, only. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. You can eat all kinds of stuff. Well, I mean, Chicken Caesar salad's a, a go-to if you go somewhere. It's like a chain. That, that, how's that keto though? Just don't eat the croutons. Or the Caesar dressing's got to have a bunch of sugar. It's though, right? mostly fat. It's all oil hmm. fat. The real, but all right, we got to we got to make it like you have it done. Like you we got to make a declaration though, because that there's the airport Caesar salad, right? That you get the chicken Caesar salad, right? And that has the packet from made from like craft or something, right? That has a bunch of sugar in it. I, maybe not though. Like, most probably lots, most of the time Caesar dressing is mostly fat. Does it taste good? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's usually. I'm oh. telling you. All right, we'll look at. If, like you've done no research on this. I've done zero. I just feel it. I feel it. It's an emotion. Yeah. The food's emotional. I I told someone I'm keto today as I ate a donut in front of them. <laughs> I'm felt, brutal. And they're like, brutal. "You can eat that?" I'm like, "Yeah, totally." <laughs> just lying to them. You can eat whatever you want. They're gonna Say. believe it and just go, oh, "Man, I'm keto now." And just no, go yeah. to Duncan. No, I do this move with my hand. <laughs> Okay, now I'm in keto. Now I'm keto. <laughs> Starting now. It's an invisible wall I put up yeah, every time. Yeah, a bunch of cereal. Now I'm keto. I, I have been trying to do less sugar, less grain diet, and I feel better, and it's only been like four days. Good. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Get it all out, though. No more nothing. No sugar. Like masturbate? Zero. Oh. Uh, that, too. It's good for you. Well, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to be a 35 year old getting wet dreams. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not. I'm not dating. Any, I'm not going out on the town with any ladies. So. Got an old loaded revolver down there. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, you need to take care of yourself in that way. I guess <laughs> it's kind of maintenance. It's kind of cruel that uh, nature makes you do that. What do you think? Would you ever hope, Alex? <laughs> Alex, but like, I wonder how long before they talk about jerking off. Well, look. It's, uh, it, I knew I knew it was gonna be soon. I knew it was gonna be quick. That's a good. We're on like brand. Seven and a half. Well, it's, actually, it's well, it's actually. Uh, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but I'm pretty active on the Reddit community. And wow. It's, right now, it's I'm no. So no glad nut, you said no Reddit. Number. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm pretty I'm active wiener. on the message boards on Pornhub. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's where you make friends, right? Be like, yeah, that's, that's who does it. They're I your see. they're your uh, internet friends. Yeah. But uh, no, it's uh, it's no nut November, you know. You uh, yeah, you fuck that. Sorry. <laughs> What's this now? No nut. I don't know who came up with this shit. <laughs> no nut November. No, oh, just don't nut all November. What is everybody <laughs> December doing 1st. a prize fight at the end of the month? Yeah, Thanksgivings <laughs> so are going to be murder fests. Yeah, this there's a sub. Premise. There's a subreddit called uh, No Fat, and these people believe that uh, masturbation leads to uh or like i guess porn addiction all these different uh -huh. things mess with your brain chemicals to where you feel an anxious anxiety depression all this stuff and they they pin all that on porn uh masturbation i i, I stumbled into this weird rabbit hole on the internet and i was like what is going on yeah here? what is this world yeah it's gotta be i mean look i hang around with comedians and if that's not that's like a part time job is going on poor. <laughs> Listen, that. I'm busy. Uh, <laughs> and I got two things working on material. I definitely think it replace. If you look at time as like a, a commodity, I, I kind of I look at it as like a unit of measurement. Like I look at it like a flat circle. <laughs> and it's yeah, you would get to that fifth dimension, man. It's called love. But uh, what I'm saying is, I feel like you can fill your cup up. I think the anxiety is because you realize you're not doing anything except that and you should you know everybody knows they should be doing something else but they're not getting that social aspect of their life in and whether people agree they're lone wolves or whatever everybody kind of needs some kind of community some more a lot more than others i'm more of a i like being around people a lot more i don't necessarily i'm kind of weird because i like people around me but I don't necessarily want to be chatty cat. Like, <laughs> listen, can you I just loved stay, having, <laughs> just stay. I loved having our Shut office where people were working there, but I don't need to talk to them. I just like having everybody around. Yeah. I don't know yeah. what that is, but uh, watch me work out. 
yeah, watch me work out in the other room because <laughs> I only got 20 minutes. But um, so speaking of working out, that's what I was talking to you about because I was like, if you're kind of like in a funk and we all get in a funk, so there's nothing like embarrassing or any of that about that. And you're, you're open about talking about any of this stuff. Yeah. It'd be, it'd be hard not to, it'd be hard to do the lunch pool kind of brand without talking about your own experience. But, you know, we were texting back and forth and it was just like, here's some ideas you didn't ask for <laughs> that I, I sent your way. But I was like, guy, I, I think guys, when we don't have some physical work to do, I think almost all guys uh, atrophy in everything. Like oh, yeah. their whole body, yeah. mental, mental, physical, spiritual. I think we all atrophy if we don't keep ourselves physically going in one way or the other. So that's why I was like, if you can't work out because you, your back's all fucked up, uh, you know, see if you can do something with your hands, like build something small. Yeah. You know, it's like an intrinsic guilt, right? Definitely for men. I think it's just more primal. Uh, yeah, it's like uh, I think it's, I think it's for everybody. Honestly, I think men and women. I don't think it's just men, but. Men, it's much more obvious. I think to this, us, I, think, I the think the effects are greater, though. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah. Well, maybe not. I don't know. Well, <laughs> working out does, you know, cause you to produce testosterone if you're, you know, doing the right exercises and things, which can cause, you know, a, a measurable chemical reaction. You know. So what? So what have you been able to do to kind of curve that lately? That was probably I don't know two weeks ago, a week ago we talked. Uh, yeah. Anything to help? Anything? What, how well, I think how great was my advice? <laughs> <laughs> so it's a pump, pump Law's ego a little bit. Um, I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head. I think in our research, what we've been doing with Lunch Pool, we found that um, there's a lot of latent mental health issues out there, especially in the professional space. And it's, it's, it's becoming less of a taboo to talk about, but it's, uh, it's still a little stigmatized. But, you know, like I have a family history of uh, bipolar disorder and it's something that I was like, you know, I've been trying to like stay away from talking about. I'm like, oh, you know, I'll just eat right. Oh, I'll do exercise. I'll do all this stuff. But, over the, you know, I had to really be honest with myself and say over the past 10 years, you know, I've had these really crazy highs. And, and that's one of the symptoms of the disorder where you feel like you have superpowers. You know, you can get a lot done. You don't need sleep. You don't need to eat. But then it's, uh, it's, you know, balanced out by these like super dulling lows where you just don't want to do anything. And I think I, you know, I have the, those family, that family history, those tendencies. And when I was talking to law, you were, you were basically like, you know, you sound like you're down. I'd hurt my back. So I, you know, I hadn't exercised in like two months. And so you, uh, your advice was well taken. I actually went and, uh, I picked up a $15 projector at a yard sale oh yeah yeah you we have a we have a we have a big basement room so i made a uh, i went to home depot i got some boards and i built a projector screen and you know it's just it was something simple but just getting out of the house having a project creating something that really you know helped me focus my energy and effort and then at the end you kind of get that like uh like eric said you get that endorphin rush where you're like okay i did something i did this yeah, we're all looking for gold stars. I was thinking about this the other day. Like, there's a lot of people. The reason people humble brag online a lot is they don't get the recognition probably a lot in their own life. You know, like the gym posts, as annoying as those are for a lot of people, I think part of that is like, well, I don't think anybody sees me doing this, right? So yeah. I, I don't, I like to make fun of it, but I'll do it too. And it's in the same way, it's like, we know all three of us know in digital assuredly like your schedule's weird like that sometimes because it's hard to discipline yourself to go, okay, I'm going to stop here and then wake up like a normal person. Cause you'd, you'd rather just go, you'll figure out a way to justify, well, time, <laughs> there's a time value of, of it compounding. If I finish it now, it'll, it'll affect, it'll be better down the line. I'd rather burn out a little bit. You justify all that shit, and you end up – it's not a good life. Yeah, especially if you know, like, what you have to do. Right. It's not like – if you're trying to figure something out, that's something I'm much easier to walk away from and, like, do something differently and come back to it. But if I know, like, oh, I just got to do this 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 work. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm just going to – I won't stop until I finish it. Yeah, and it's not – it's tough. that's tough to do in digital. And then the other part – and you don't get recognition, really. The – Oh. You never get a client that's like, perfect, awesome, thanks, you're the best. It's oh, There's always something wrong. Like, 
you just know turning it in or whatever you're doing digitally, it's never going to be like, oh, you guys are fucking awesome. <laughs> like, it's like, yeah. it's, oh, it's kind of, is good and bad, right? It's kind of, I see that like stand up, like your set's never a hundred percent. You talk to any, any of the big guys too. And they're like, they'll kill and you watch them off stage and they're like, I don't know. It was okay. Yeah. I, I missed this thing and I fucked this thing up. So there's that part. But what I was saying is the recognition a lot of the time can give you the motivation. Like I'm a big, uh, inertia guy. So like the more I'm doing, the more I can do. And like eventually it becomes this thing where it doesn't feel taxing to do all these things and juggle them all. Uh, but when I do hit a lull and I'm not taking care of myself that it can go the other way too. So I totally mm -hmm. empathize with that situation. Like I've told Eric, there's been some times I'm like, yeah, I haven't been sleeping all week and I just woke up after like 48 hours straight. Yeah. Just sleeping, basically. It catches yeah. up. And that's not, it's not. And now you have a kid, right? So you have to kind of be wary of it, you know, or, or, yeah. or aware of it. But, um, you know, I think the weird thing that we all want is a little recognition. I think lunch pool is good in the, in the way that human interaction for lunch, even with a stranger, right. That just needs a connection of some sort. That is like yeah. the basic bitch of a basic bitch need of uh, my Maslow's hierarchy needs. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and it's uh, something that we've, you know, that I strongly believe in is that motivation is, is fleeting. So, you know, an example is, like you said, I have a two-year-old, almost two-year-old daughter and, you know, my day, my whole schedule changed and I didn't have a whole lot of time to squeeze in, you know, some, some alone me time. It was all either work, working for clients, working on the startup, you know, whatever it may be or getting her ready for daycare. So, you know, I, I went through this extreme burst of motivation. Uh, a, a few months ago, and I started getting up at 5 a.m. every morning. Yeah. And I would go do yoga. I would go. go work out a little bit. I would you know, write down my day's activity plan. And that lasted for like two weeks. And I felt awesome, you know. But then you, there's that one day where you, uh, you go know, out to dinner, have some wine. Exactly. Maybe yeah, sleep in the next day. Oh, yeah. Have some ice so, cream after the so, drinks. So I think that's, you know, that's another thing that, you know, is the power of what we're doing at Lunch Pool is. Uh, it's accountability. It's, you know, why do people have coaches? Why do people work out in groups? It's because sometimes you don't have the internal motivation and you need someone to be like, Hey, let's go to the gym. I know you don't feel like it. We're going anyway. And it's just that little nudge that you need that kind of sets you over the top. And it can be the same thing with just taking a break in your day. It's like, Oh, I have all this work to do. I need to really focus and hammer down. I got these deadlines. I got clients breathing down my neck. But sometimes you just need somebody to come around and be like, hey, Law, you need a break, man. You, you're no, I, I do it to myself now. I can create my own uh, fake deadlines that aren't as crucial as I'm making them. And sometimes I'll oh, like overemphasize, I got to get this done. And it'll almost, it has a negative effect. It'll like, it's almost like uh, you got too many things running on your computer and like, yeah. I can, I'll slowly get it done, but I'm not, I'm not focused on it. Cause there's like a weird anxious part. So now I either go, uh, I'll go like do like, like a 20 minute workout or like uh, now I'll do a walk. Cause it's sometimes you just can't, I've already done the workout for the day kind of thing. And I don't want to do it again. You know, you'll hurt yourself. Get that treadmill. Uh, I need to get the treadmill. Dude. No, I got, I mean, I walk outside. Right. But I can work on the laptop on my treadmill. I don't, my hands are too sweaty. I can barely do it. They're just sitting still. You see my computer, my keyboard looks gross. Get a bunch of fans. I'm trying to help you. No, no, I'm with you. I'm no, I'm envious. I can't do that. Like I, I physically, I don't think I can. I remember I tried to do that in the office with the bike and I tried to put the laptop on top of the spin bike. Yeah. And that, that's no bueno, but I, it doesn't mean I can't do other stuff. So I'll dictate stuff. If I'm really on my game, I'll dictate content or dictate ideas for this show. Um, you know, ahead of time. And that's, that's where I needed to get. But for you, it's like, I was, I, I pulled up a study while we've been talking, my friend, uh, Tracy, who, uh, owns uh, knockout LA to a big kind of fitness brand over in LA. We're getting a lot of attention. I'm pumped for, her. we'll get her on the show soon, but, um, you know, 80% of Americans 
are insufficiently active. Mm. That's, wow. that's crazy. So, I believe it's it. a big stat. It, so, you know, previous research has shown that lifting weights helps lift depression, cardiovascular activities, reduce the effect effects of anxiety, and any type of movement improves mental health. And so, you know, part of it is just getting up and getting out. The hardest part of going to the gym is driving there. I think that a lot of people have like a thing in their head that I need to do. I got to go to the gym for an hour. And if I, if I, yeah. and it's like, I don't feel like going for an hour. It's like, okay, well, I just won't go. And it's like, no, it's not. It's like that big, there was a giant fat guy who couldn't even get out of a chair and he lost 900 pounds, whatever he lost. And all, he couldn't walk, but all he could do was wave his arms around or whatever he could do. Yeah. And it was like, that guy, you know, once he made the decision, he wasn't going to be like, oh, I'm just not going to, you know, I can't because every little bit helps. Yeah, Every well, movement takes calories. Sun, That's what people got to realize. On like, Sunday. Us talking takes calories. On Sunday, I was feeling a little anxious from not, I felt guilty. I wasn't getting, I wasn't working and I was tired, right? I was kind of just, I was like almost about to flop and go, I might just lay on the couch and just watch Red Zone all day, you know? And I, I was about in that mode and I was like, the last time I did that, it was nice. Every now and again is fine, right? But um, it's one of those things where it was like, I don't, I'll feel way guiltier that night or Monday morning that I didn't do shit with my life that day. And so I go, what would be the opposite of doing that right now? So I was just like, all right, I could go right back to sleep or I could get up and we, we were going to record on Sunday and couldn't do it. And so it was like, all right, we're not doing that. I'm just going to get up and go for a run and I'll run as far as I can go until I get tired. I was sore from working out the last three days pretty hard. Uh I'll just go, I'll just go until I can go. And then I'll, um, we lost it for a second. And then, uh, I'll just walk, jog or just walk until, and I'll answer. I just answered emails and got my to-do list set up for that week ahead of time. So I was like, Oh yeah, that's right. I'm a person that even if I just go on a walk, it's not more of an exercise. It'll actually get my brain going in a motivational way to do task work like that. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with walking. Right. It's, you know, it's moving. It's burning it's calories. Not, I always feel, for some reason, I have to get over this, like, old lady picture in my head of, like, little weights and, like. I know. Like, it's I'm a, going on a I'm fast walk. I'm exercising. <laughs> yeah. Nice this and is easy exercise. now. No, it was, it, as long as I get other exercise done, to me, that's fine. The walk is just extra. Well, you know? I mean, it's. Y- you're going to burn calories. You're not necessarily going to get the endorphins that so went, it, a run might give you, you yeah. know, but you're still burning the calorie. It doesn't have the, uh, well, my hip the, was getting fucked up and I was like, well, don't push this, uh, you know, I'm yeah. not, I haven't been stretching enough. So I was there like, you go. but it was like, uh, I ended up walking, ran for about two and a half miles and then just walked a uh, total of eight. So yeah, great. Good job. It, well, and I and, was like, it, in Tampa, it's weird because everybody thinks you have a DUI if you walk around in the city. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I and I, I it's a weird context because if we lived in New York, you'd walk for two hours and that wouldn't be a big, that wouldn't be weird. Like if I walked from oh, Eric's place to my place, which is probably eight miles or so. You'd so, get stabbed. You no, know, people would be like, what, what's wrong? Right. What's going on? Yeah. It's like, I just wanted to. But if you walked, a, you know, wanted to take a walk for two hours somewhere in, in like in a spread out city like this or like Denver or Birmingham or something like that. <laughs> be it's like, weird. What's wrong? Are you on cre- uh, crystal real, meth? What's it's going really on? It's really messed up that our cities are built that way to stop know. judging me for walking on the highways, I mean, guys. It's weird. <laughs> well, and, and I, I'm not sure if this is true. So take this with a grain of salt. Maybe I can research it afterwards. But uh, <laughs> recently my uncle, uh, he was telling me, that your endocrine system and like your lymph nodes and everything replenish while you're walking. So just that movement, it like your body's flushing through everything. I don't know. I don't know if those is, do. I don't know. I, it, I, <laughs> I know lymph nodes yeah. is like throat. It, it's like your hormones. Oh. It can control Close. It makes sense, your endocrine. Though. I mean, I don't know. Like I said, don't know if it's true. We'll have to verify. But it makes sense that if you're just sedentary, if you're just sitting there, your systems are like, oh well, we're we're good. We're not going to do anything. But if you're walking around, you're moving, you're getting away from your, your desk, your body's like, okay, it's time to, like, let's cycle through this. Let's get some of these toxins out. Let's, uh, yeah, your body wants to chill brain. out. Your body wants to yeah. just be at homeostasis. It doesn't want to burn fat. It doesn't want to do any of that stuff. It wants you to survive. And by getting yeah. up and moving around, it's got to change. It's got to, you know, 
change whatever it's the way it was using their energy systems and all that you know yeah proportions of burning calories how much how much time we got left uh, we got like five minutes all right i we'll want to go to 30 for I, alex because he's got a meeting alex i had to i have a couple random questions i wanted or pitch ideas to you while i got you on the sure. horn here uh a do you know how to scrape emails out of gmail <laughs> i can't figure Very this nice. out so you used to be able to export all your emails. Let's say, uh, and this is a good advice for anybody that's doing their own new brand or something, make an email list in Ma- MailChimp. You get 2,000 subscribers for free. Uh, that's uh, 2001, they start charging you. But you used to be able to take all your emails, anybody you've emailed back and forth with where it predictively pops up, it mm-hmm. would automatically get rolled up into a contact list. Uh, in, in your Gmail, and then you could export that whole thing into a CSV or Excel file. Right. And then you. F- I do know how to do that. So if wait, you, wait, no, but, actually... but wait, you can't do it like that anymore. So Google made an app, literally called Google Contacts, that you have to tab everybody now. You have to manually go through everybody and add them to your contacts list. Mm. So it's not you can't do saying. it. You can't do it that way. Yeah, I'm looking at I'm looking at uh, Google Contacts right now, and that's what I was going to suggest. You can export it from there, but you have to actually add them in there. Yep. Yep. Uh, manually. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out a way to do. It. I know there's a bunch of Chrome extensions. I figured you're kind of someone that plays around with this kind of stuff, like I do. Um, and I didn't, I didn't know if you knew anything off the top of your head. It sounds like you don't. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. Well, you knew about the ducks soup thing on LinkedIn. If you want to tell everybody mm-hmm. what that was, yeah, duck soup is uh is pretty cool. There's a there's actually another one too um, that I haven't mentioned to you before. Uh, there's a pretty cool plugin with um, it goes along the same what I call semi automation technique. So duck soup is a plugin for LinkedIn where you can basically uh, you do a search for a type of person. So maybe they work at a company, maybe they are in a certain industry. And what it'll do is it'll go step by step and view their profiles. And you can actually, you can send requests, or you can send messages, you can send connections. I just like to view the profiles because Creep. LinkedIn has that weird feature where it's like, who's viewed your profile? And so it just puts you in their world, basically. I think um, I just read a stat, 60% pay for some premium uh, uh, of LinkedIn, or the active users. Really? Yeah, because oh, you can do the, Yeah, you can use the cheap. You can use the cheap version just to see who viewed you. I know but that's Why? like fifteen bucks or something. I can't remember. Yeah. Curiosity is huge, though. I mean, you want to know like who's, who's oh it's, that was everything like with Facebook in yeah. the beginning. Remember Facebook in the yeah. beginning was like you're creeping on some chick and you're like, oh fuck, I accidentally hit like on an old picture yeah. of her. I was trying to look at her bathing <laughs> suit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's I don't do that now, right, Alex? <laughs> oh no, never. I'm happily married and love my wife. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the what's um, the, other, what? so alter- the other alternative to duck soup? Well, it's it's not alternative to duck soup, but it's actually um, oh a new gangster it's product. A, it's it's a gangster product because it's um it's called Yam. Yet another mail merge. It's a plugin for Excel. So for uh, my uh, Google Office or Google Google Sheets. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um. And what it does is uh, you can send a mail merge from your Gmail account. What, so, what is a mail merge? So a mail merge is like uh, on Outlook, wherever you're like, I got this list of 600 people. I want to email them all individually, but I want to kind of, I want it to be personalized, but I, I don't have time to sit there one by one. So you can put in merge fields like, oh yeah, hey, yeah. Wall. I right, want to invite you personally to come to my my digital marketing get together. And you put the simple and, HTML code for the like first name, last name, comma. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So you have a spreadsheet with your contact list. You put you run this plug in and you can send a like personalized email to uh to all your people. And that's news flash for Link- asshole. That's is that connected to LinkedIn? Is that what you said? No, it's not connected. It's just a similar, uh, you know, I call it semi-automation because it's like, what's something that I would do anyway, repeatedly? Um, right. I, so, why so why wouldn't you that. just do it through MailChimp though? Well, with MailChimp, you know, like there's a there's a certain amount of, uh, you've heard of the term banner blindness, right? Nope. So you, you go to a website and you, you just don't even see the ads because we're so conditioned to ignore them. Well, it's the same thing with emails. When they see Not an email ads. come through, 
<laughs> of course, I click on all your ads. But, I'm sure you do. Yeah. But on but on in, in my inbox, you know, if I get an email and you can tell there's like little cues where you can see that it's from Mailchimp or oh, from a mailing list. Yeah, 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 yeah. You just kind of ignore that. But if you get an email from a friend, you ignore you know, it's, that. It's kind of nice. <laughs> You got to remember, not everybody's analytical like you. I have to remember. Yeah. I do dumb guy math. Like, I can see stuff. I know it's. I know ads are hitting me. I'll still click on them. Like, I know. I know why they're targeting me. Um, yeah. And I know. I know the whole. I know the whole uh, UX. But it's like, uh, I'll still click on a random ad and get suckered into it. Yeah. You know. Well, nobody nobody likes to get suckered. Uh, another, I mean, speaking specifically of LinkedIn, I don't know if you saw my other trick that I've been kind of uh, putting out there, and, and a lot of people were pretty receptive to it. One of my posts got like, uh, I think, 6,000 uh, hits on it. It was basically, I'm if you look rat. at my name on LinkedIn, there's a light bulb before my name. Yeah. And and I don't do that just to stand out. I do it because I I, I hate over-excessive automation. And so a lot of these people that are using bots to connect and message you, when it puts your first name in, it doesn't uh, recognize the emoji. Oh, so yeah. it'll say, that's good. It'll say, hey, question mark, Alex, uh, I'd love to connect with you. And I'm like, okay, like sometimes I'll let one slide, but then some of these people have a whole sequence where it'll be like, hey, question mark, Alex, yeah. notice you haven't responded. Yeah. Are you too busy? You know, and like that, I'm like, okay, that's too much. You know, you can't automate the whole, the whole relationship building process. I might copy that. Is there what should I put in that? What's a good emoji? I should put it in there. Uh, the eggplant. Eggplant? <laughs> eggplant. Eggplant would be fitting for you. Take the That's new good. position. I just accepted it like that. I I got a bunch of those generic. Congrats on your new role, and I replied to everybody. Hey, thanks for the generic response. I know. <laughs> <laughs> those are, why does LinkedIn even do that? It's kind of annoying. Because they just followed what Gmail is doing, where you can you can do they pick three Auto answers field. for you, but like I don't yeah, yeah I don't understand the. I get the replies. I don't get like, hey, you should send a generic message to him that everybody knows is generic. Right. So I, I yeah. the people who thought it was funny that I gave them a little shit about it, now I like them. Like, I, I have 3,000 <laughs> connections on LinkedIn. I'm a LinkedIn whore. So I don't know most of the people I have on there. Well, well LinkedIn should just, like, they could have that feature, but they could just send you one and be like, hey, these 300 people that you're connected with, said congratulations good job you know like you don't need an individual message for that's even less personal on. yeah but yeah you're not, you're not playing to the endorphins part of like ooh, people like me because that i mean that's yeah, a lot of it let's be honest that's why they want people to dm you you know oh yeah buddy i mean that's like i see it in the dating apps too chemicals. they they there's an endorphin rush everybody gets from like ooh, you matched up with someone all right buddy good you sound sprightlier even Thanks, though we Alex. talked to you, oh, yeah, I feel a lot time. better. It's, Good. It's all that. It's it's because I reached out to my buddy Law. Yeah. Good advice, and I followed it. That's what I'm talking about. I'm a right. healer. Cool. What about my sweat yeah, equity? Lunchpool.io. Get connected. Get on that beta. My sweat equity. Thanks for having me on, guys. Later. Sweat equity. Sweat equity.